The last of this afternoon's programmes for schools and colleges, merry-go-round begins in one minute. Hello. This program's about food, and I'm just getting ready to cook a meal. It's a meal that you might like to cook sometime, too. It's very easy, very tasty, and anyone can do it. We'll be giving you the ingredients later on in the program, and with plenty of time to make a note of them, too. But first, what about the title of this program? You are what you eat. It sounds a bit like a riddle, doesn't it? Hello, Max. Hello, Pam. Well, that's really what it is. A, a riddle, a kind of a quiz, and we're not going to tell you the answer till much later on. See if you can work it out for yourself. See if you can guess why we say you are what you eat as we go on. But don't worry about it. We'll tell you why we did it at the end of the programme after the recipe. Well, actually, there's more to our quiz than just one riddle. Come over here, because I've got some questions for you. You see, when we started to find out about food, what we discovered, first of all, were lots of surprises. Well, here's the first surprise and the next question in our quiz. There aren't any prizes for guessing what those are. But there is one thing that all those cars need to keep them working, isn't there? Without one thing, they'd all stop. Well, right, of course, petrol, fuel for their engines, because all machines need fuel of some sort to make them work, to drive them along. But what about this? There's a machine here that certainly isn't using petrol. So the next question is, what's driving the bike? It's not the pedals, is it? Because on their own, they couldn't do anything. There's one thing that a bike just must have to make it move. Right again. Without a rider, there's no way the bicycle can move. The bike's a machine, and the rider is a bit like the engine of the machine. But it was the next question that had me foxed. Where did the human engine on that bicycle machine get its fuel from? Because you don't see cyclists tanking up at filling stations now, do you? Well, here's some fuel. Would you believe that when you eat food, one of the things that you're doing is taking on fuel to keep working? Well. I believe it now you've told me, but it is a bit of a surprise, isn't it, to think that food, like a biscuit, can be fuel for an engine? Well, I needed some convincing too, so our model builder came along and produced this for me. Well, it's a sort of model engine, isn't it? Yes, that's what it is. In fact, it's a steam engine. But Pam, just have a look at this. To make it go, the engine needs a fire under the boiler to make steam. The steam pushes the wheels round and makes the engine do its work. Our engine has a wood fire. Wood burns brightly in the air. But now, the fire is all burnt out. The wood is used up, 
and the engine has stopped. So, we put a biscuit in the firebox. Biscuit doesn't burn on its own. It needs help. This hose blows a draft of special gas taken from the air to keep it going. With that extra oxygen gas from the air, the biscuit makes a lovely fire. And so, there's plenty of steam. And the steam engine works perfectly. Well, Max, that machine certainly takes the biscuit. Oh, Pam. But you do get the point, don't mm. you? That the biscuit makes very good fuel, and so does lots of other food. But it's all very well to call food fuel just because the biscuit makes the engine work. But, but you saw for yourself, didn't you, what happened when the fuel under the boiler ran out? The, the engine just stopped. And that doesn't happen to us, does it? Because we can keep going for a very long time without having to stoke up on biscuits or any other kind of food. Well, perhaps we could make that another question in our quiz. What happens to human beings when they haven't got any food to eat? Well, that's almost so easy, it's, uh, it's almost silly, but I do see the point you're trying to make. That just like cars, we have a kind of spare tank for taking along some extra fuel should we need it, although it does look as if this poor man's almost run out, doesn't it? Mm. Do you know where the human fuel tank is? Have you got it yet? Where do we keep our food reserves? Well, that's right, of course, we pack it away as fat around our middle or anywhere all around our body. Any extra fuel that the body can't use straight away, it turns into fat and stores up. And that made me think about cars again. There wouldn't be much point in designing a really streamlined racer, beautiful, sleek and fast, and then sticking on a whacking great fuel tank just so that it could run for ages without having to stop to get topped up, would there? Well, our food expert told us that this chap's tank's enough to keep him going for months. And if he wants to become a streamlined racer again, well, he's got to get himself a smaller tank. And that means not eating more food each day than his body really needs. Well, actually, Pam, that might not be uh, quite true. Because there are some people who can't get thin, even if they starve themselves completely. And, of course, they're not well and should see a doctor. But most people get fat because they give their body machine more fuel than it needs to be going on with. So there you are. Food is fuel for our body machine. But there's a lot more to food than that. Just think again about machines like cars. You mean another question for our quiz? That's right. Now, apart from a driver and petrol, what else do machines like cars need to keep them running? Well, there are a great many things, mostly under the bonnet, like antifreeze and water for the radiator. water for the washers, and more especially clean water for the battery. Oil for the works of the engine. And air for the tires. And of course there are lots of other things. And if the car breaks down, then someone has to mend it. Cars really do need rather a lot of attention, don't they? And so do all machines. Sooner or later, they're going to need some attention. But there is one exception. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to bore you with a lot of sales talk. I'm not going to make wild, exaggerated claims about this fantastic machine. I'm just going to let its advantages speak for itself. Now, most machines need special fuel, like um, petrol for cars, like diesel oil for lorries, like coal for steam engines, well, you know the list. But this incredible machine actually runs on any variety of fuels, and all of them are easy to obtain. Runs on natural fuel. Now,